land. Can't live with it, can't live without it. I actually don't think that phrase works here. Land, we're so lucky to have it. Think about it. Only 1% of the total mass of the earth is its crest. You know, that hard outer layer that covers the entire globe and keeps us from burning alive on the hot mantle below. Now the crust may be the worst part of the pizza. Don't at me, but it gives the world a nice solid surface, which is great because we are solid people. <laughs> well, <laughs> only there's a catch. 70% of the Earth's solid surface is covered with ocean. So if we were to take the entire planet, only a fraction of 1% is solid land above water. And that small percentage of land is what sustains all human life, as well as all forms of non-aquatic life. Land really matters to us, and honestly, we wouldn't exist without it. So let's do our best to understand it. All right, Joey, set up straight and pay attention. I'm kidding. This is recorded, so I can't see you, but I'm assuming your name is Joey and you're slouching. The study of where land came from and how it is changing is called geomorphology. I think the Greek guy is on a break, so we'll have to break this down ourselves. Geo, as we now know, is the Earth, and morphology probably means something as well. It means how things change or evolve. Yeah, duh, I, I knew that. Land is influenced by the powers from both below and from above. Or, if you want to talk more like a fancy scientist, by both geologic processes and surface processes. Let's start with what's going on below our feet. Below the Earth's crust is a huge layer called the pepperoni. Just kidding. Pepperoni pizza. Am I hungry? The layer below the crust is the mantle. The crust is only 1% of the Earth's volume but the mantle is closer to 84% of the Earth's volume. So yeah, we crust people are completely outnumbered, but it's whatever. We're not bitter or anything. Most of the mantle is rocks and solid material, but much of it is melted in some form. And much like me on a Saturday morning, it acts like a very, very slow moving liquid and the mantle is hot. No, not that kind of hot, but I won't complain. In its coldest places near the Earth's crust, it's still more than 200 degrees Celsius, which is about the temperature you would need to bake your pizza in the oven. Sorry, sorry, I'm talking about pizza again. <laughs> the deeper you get, the hotter it gets. Like we're talking 4,000 degrees Celsius, which is about the temperature you would need to vaporize your pizza in your oven and also melt your oven. Seriously, when is lunch? The mantle is cooler and therefore more solid the closer it is to the surface. And the outer part of the mantle, together with the Earth's crust, creates a shell on the Earth called the lithosphere. This lithosphere is really nice for us humans. It gives us a solid surface that's thick enough to keep us safe from piping hot magma. That happens to be one of my favorite things to be safe from. It's at least in my top five. The lithosphere also has a mind of its own because it's broken into several pieces that fit together like an enormous jigsaw puzzle covering the earth. These pieces are called slices. Sorry, tectonic plates. Tectonic plates can be pretty huge. There are seven major plates, which entirely cover most continents. In between these plates are several minor plates and connected to these major and minor plates, there are also many little microplates, or as I like to call them, paper plates. Now the mantle, like I said, works like a very, very slow moving liquid, like me after eating pizza. Someone stop me. The tectonic plates sort of sit on top of the mantle and are therefore very gradually shifting, not unlike your local congressperson. Have you ever seen maps of how land looked on Earth millions of years ago? The supercontinent Pangaea existed from about 300 million to 100 million years ago. That's almost as old as my hippie grandma. <laughs> At that time, all the tectonic plates 
brought all the land together in one solid mass. Gradually, in the millions and millions of years since, those tectonic plates got tired of each other. Can you blame them? That's a long time to be roommates. These plates drifted apart and each land has separated into continents. Someday, millions of years from now, if the world still exists, the continents might just come together again. And oh boy, what a party that would be. <laughs> When tectonic plates come together, it isn't exactly a peaceful event. They get all up in one another's space, the Earth's crust becomes smushed together, making mountain ranges and causing other major changes. It's like Earth's puberty. Fortunately, while the process is intense, it is usually pretty gradual. Not always, but we'll get into that in a minute. The tallest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas, came from the Indo-Australian tectonic plate moving toward the Eurasian plate. It only shifts a few centimeters per year, but after millions of years, all those centimeters add up to create some pretty huge mountains. Remember when I said that sometimes it isn't so gradual? Well, that's because every tectonic process has a breaking point. Earthquake. Um, ow. As the tectonic plates come together, or pull apart, they sometimes hit tipping points where massive amounts of energy are released from the lithosphere. This kind of energy causes shaking and waves that go throughout the ground, resulting in two things, the feeling of the earth shaking on the surface and Dwayne Johnson movies. Not surprisingly, most earthquakes happen close to the boundaries of the tectonic plates. Volcanoes are another result of our tectonic plates that impact geomorphology. Like earthquakes, volcanoes tend to occur near the boundaries of tectonic plates. Moving tectonic plates sometimes create holes or pockets in the Earth's crust. These pockets fill with some of that super hot liquid rock from the mantle. You might even call them hot pockets. Specifically, pizza hot pockets. Please, anyone. No? The hot rock builds up a lot of energy until eventually something's gotta blow. Molten rock escapes and comes out of the Earth's surface. It's like the Earth is popping a zit, which is really gross, but I did tell you geomorphology is like Earth's puberty. Eventually, this molten rock called lava, when it comes above the crust, cools off and becomes solid rock. These rocks change the land and sometimes create entirely new landforms. Many islands in the Pacific Ocean were created by volcanoes. The others, I assume, were made from Legos? Now, we talked about what happens from down below. What about things happening up here on the surface? What else impacts our land and helps us understand geomorphology? Most surface processes that affect the land come from one of these famous and powerful elements. Water, wind, ice, fire, pizza. I'm hungry. Oceans, which are water, in case you didn't know, are constantly and relentlessly affecting the land. All day, every day. Waves crash on the coast, gradually shifting the land and changing the shape of our coast. Giant waves like tsunamis can speed up this process and destroy a lot more at the same time. Rivers form as water flows over the top of the land. They too have a huge impact, not just by moving dirt and shaping rocks, but also by supporting plants and animals, which also impact the land. Water always has and always will shape and change our land. In fact, water is so important to physical geography that we talk about it by itself in another video. Wind is a big deal too. Have you ever gotten stuck in a dust storm, a sandstorm, or a tornado? Well, probably not a tornado, you'd be dead. Or an Oz. Dust and sandstorms are when the wind literally picks up pieces of dirt and small rocks and moves them from one place to another. When wind blows on rock formations over time, they are shaped and sculpted into different shapes and formations. These are just some examples of how the wind can change the face of the land. 
Ice is another major influencer of the land. In colder parts of the world, there are huge frozen masses called glaciers, often as big as a mountain. Glaciers can shift or melt over time and both actions shape the land and change the surface of the earth. And fire. Oh, sweet fire. We've already talked about how volcanoes can impact the land by blowing up some of it and literally making more of it in other places by dumping lava on it. Wildfires are another major influencer of geomorphology. They can, for example, burn all trees and plants in an area and make the land more prone to changes by other forces like wind. Finally, there's one more major process that impacts geomorphology that every serious geography student needs to know. Pizza. Life. Yeah, life. Isn't that what I said? Of course, life, such as plants and animals, have an impact on the land. Trees and forests change the land significantly. Animals burrow in the ground or migrate in herds, and as a result, geomorphology happens. We human beings are significant land changers. We have done so much to affect the land we live on, whether it's digging in the earth by mining for minerals, cutting down forests for wood, or building houses and other structures. Every day, we have a huge impact on land. So you could say you are a geomorph. Ooh, I like the sound of that. The very land you are standing on right this moment as we speak, has been impacted by most, if not all of these processes of geomorphology. Understanding geography means knowing something about how the land we live on came to be. And that, my friends, is pizza. I mean, geomorphology. Hey everyone, I'm Niels with Engage Global Storytelling. Thanks so much for joining us on the journey of geography. And guess what? At Engage Global Storytelling, our goal is to teach the whole world about the world. You know, we're pretty focused, but that means you. So keep coming back and you can learn more about geography, you can learn more about countries, you can learn more about cultures, you can learn more 